So today we're going to be talking about China. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about how the relationship between China and the two Koreas work um, currently. But because so many of uh, today's um, political and um, like geographic conflicts are based on um, historical events such as the Korean War, we're going to start out with a brief history of uh, what happened from the Korean War and uh, to today. And then we're going to talk about how the relationship works uh, today. And uh, to start off, uh, we have Jun Kim. Yo. Okay, the basic information. Uh, first of all, I want to input basic facts and informations before we move on to our, our further information about the modern view, because we will need a basic a perspective of the Chinese government towards the security of the DPRK in North Korea led by Kim Jong-un in the modern time. So first of all, uh, China first participated in the Korean War because of multiple reasons. At first they participated in the Korean War because the US pushed too far back against the North Korean border and made China feel threatened because of the vulnerability, but made but before that, the war between North Korea and South Korea was considered pretty fierce because of the different beliefs they believed in in order to create an orderly government. The Chinese were strongly for a communist idea uh, made by Karl Marx, and the US was strongly for the capitalist thoughts and philosophies. And before going into much depth, I would want to define communism and capitalism. So first, communism is a political social science uh, ideology and their main goal focuses on their of getting rid of ownership and making the majority of the ownership to the public instead while capitalism on the other hand is an economic and political system in which a country's trade industry is controlled by the private owners and uh, because of the different beliefs the two superpower country had the sides split into two sides that were unable to easily join back up again. And our second, the aid to the north, the Chinese kept on sending aid to their little country friend North Korea for multiple reasons. One main reason was because the American forces pushed too far back into the North Korean territory, as I said before, and angered the Chinese. And the Chinese did not only give aid to the North Korea to seek revenge toward the United States Army, but also support the North Koreans for the same beliefs they had, which was communism. North Korea and China continues their relationship in the long run because of the similar struggles they went and with each other. And China continuously gives North Korea aid annually because of the close ties they had with each other during the Korean War. And even China in the modern day does not follow the way of Mao Zedong. China does not only give strong mandatory aid to the North Koreans only for their purpose, but for the good use they can have when they are together with North Koreans, which is the prison perspective. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the present perspective. Now he gave you the overview about um, what happened uh, for three years during the Korean War. And after the Korean War, well, China and North Korea, they were both backward, state, uh, ba backward states, like in the sense that they didn't develop economically and their the societies were both in like turmoil, although North Korea was kind of stable up, like, up until the 1970s. But on the other hand, uh, Although North Korea continues to be like a totalitarian backward state up to today, uh, after Mao's death in China, there was a new leader. His name was Zhang Xiaoping, and he basically abandoned all of Mao's, you know, uh, communist policies. And Mao's vision for a co like a totally communist society in China was totally abandoned. Uh, and what and Deng Xiaoping instituted like an open up policy in China, which uh, spurred like economic growth beginning in the 1980s which continued into the 90s and like the 2000s and afterwards we have the china that we know today which is continuing to like develop economically and now that they have a significant amount of economic power and which which follows with um political and ge geopolitical power um they're basically trying to like regain the past influence that it had in the korean peninsula but the Korea we know now is totally different from the Korea we knew like in the Joseon dynasty in that the Korea today is divided. 
which basically means that uh, the total, that the whole relationship dynamic um, between China and, to, and Korea is different in that uh, the way in which China uh, deals with and treats South Korea and North Korea are different. But in a sense, they want to, the, China as a country wants to deal with both countries in a positive way. But before that, we need to uh, analyze the past uh, a little more. Okay, as the past and before the whole chaos that happened between South Korea and North Korea during the 1950s through 1953, as many of you know, Korea was occupied by Japanese forces that were led by Emperor Hirohito. Fortunately, the rule ended at the end of the World War II after Japan was bombed and raided by the American fleet and with the atomic bombs, and Korea was finally set free, but as a whole was unstable because they did not have a centralized government. And because of this, the Russians and US started to come into Korea to stabilize things and to occupy Korea as a whole by drawing the 38th parallel line. And the first, the Russians uh, took over the northern part of Korea, while the US took over the southern part of Korea. And because of the line that was drawn, Korea was grown into a nation that was that was grown distinctively because of different supports because Russia was strongly communist while the US was strongly capitalist and uh, and the US's reaction to communism was not that positive because the main reason why they came to Korea was to uh, stop the spread of the communist thoughts and beliefs because they believe in the domino theory which was when they if they did not come to korea the communism will keep on spreading out to the world within a point which the whole world of asia will be in the hands and influence of communism so they did not want that to happen so they decided to come and support south korea and during the same time, China was in a civil war between the Kuomintang army and the Mao Zedong's communist, uh, communist army. And China, at the end, Mao Zedong's army won, which made China a full supporter of communism in Russia. And China decided to help North Korea with Russia, supporting Kim Il-sung as the new leader of North Korea, and which resulted in an attack that happened in 1950 and a peaceful Sunday morning, which killed many people and uh, made a huge split between North Korea and South Korea, and which also built a tension between the relationship between China and America that we know of today. So coming back to the modern view, like I said, bef like I said before, um, the way in which China deals with and like views North Korea and South Korea are different. But because of the like sh like a lot because of the significant relationships that they have with both North Korea and South Korea, they basically have to treat them like positively. Now, for the first aspect of or layer of this whole. Um, like relationship dynamics starts with an economic argument. The first, the f and China actually has a very significant eco uh, relationship economically with both North Korea and South Korea. First, when it comes to um, North Korea, the fact is that North Korea, despite the fact that it isn't a really developed country, um, it actually has lots and lots of rare earth minerals, and it has a lot of these natural resources, uh, like in their in the mountains and like in their like the topo top topography. In fact, like certain uh, like uh, recent uh, estimates actually show that the North Korean like region has over six trillion dollars uh, worth of rare earth minerals, which is you know totally you know lu lucrative, and not to mention that uh, North Korea actually has a very cheap workforce and that's why the Chinese government uh, actually uh, wants to continue to have um, good relations with North Korea on an econ economic level so that they can go into the country uh, for these rare earth minerals and at the same time you know use the labor in that country which is even cheaper than their own labor despite that China also China has very cheap labor and the second uh, you know um, point of the specifics is about how the economic relationship with South Korea is as significant. Actually, it's even more significant because China, so one of China's greatest, like biggest um, trading partners is South Korea. 
In fact, uh, like in 2013, this is like the most recent um, estimate, uh, the total uh, amount, value of trade going through South Korea and the People's Republic of China totaled $250 billion compared to the like um, uh, $6 billion of trade going to North Korea and China. So despite the, so despite the fact that uh, North Korea is not really, in, that South Korea is not really an ally of China as North Korea is, they have a very huge trade relationship, which means that uh, they have to be partners in an economic sense, which means that China has to treat South Korea positively as well. And finally, when it comes to the deterrent, um, self, when it comes to the deterrent, this is going to be explained by my partner. Uh, so first, uh, before the deterrent, I want to talk more about the uh, split after the North Korea and South Korea. And the, the first 10 years of the regime in uh, North Korea after the split between the North and South at the D, uh, after the 38th parallel was a huge success for the North Koreans that was led by Kim Il-sung, while South Korea, on the other hand, was considered a third world poverty-stricken country, having lots of struggles after the Korean War. But however, uh, after a couple of years, North Korea started to decline and led to their down, uh, downfall after the USSR dissolved uh, and departed from North Korea, which ended their aid toward North Korea. And this was a huge threat to North Korea because they were strongly dependent of the aid from foreign countries because they, didn't, they were totally dependent and it was during after a huge war. And uh, because of this, Kim Jong-un Kim Il-sung came out with a method called the Juche, which was known as self-reliance. And it's basically uh, recovering a self-recovery by, by themselves in order to recover from the Korean War and poverty. But however, because of the Juche, it angered some foreign, foreign people and foreign nations as well. So it led to their trade and export to only lead to China, which was their only... Uh, trading partners, which uh, drastically dropped the amount of trade and export in North Korea, which also led to the downfall of their economy. And for but China keeps on trading and give keep keep on giving continuous export and trade to North Korea because of the real minerals that my partner will explain. Right now. So just like I told you, um. North Korea actually has a lot of rare earth minerals, and it, they have a and the country has a lot of you know cheap labor, and wh whereas in South Korea there is a very um, lucrative there's very lucrative trade going on between China and South Korea, so they both have very good economic relations. So China has very good economic relationships with both countries, which basically means which basically means that they would um, treat them positively. Um, in an equal sense, but the truth is that um, when it comes to dealing with the countries um, in reality, China actually stands more closely with North Korea. This is because um, th this is because despite the fact that they have a very good relationship with um, South Korea in an economic sense, they be uh, China believes. Uh, that the presence of American uh, forces, of U.S. forces in South Korea, is a th is actually very uh, a threat to you know their national security, and that's how um, the and th and that's how North Korea acts as a buffer state, a buffer zone, and at the same time it also acts as an ally when uh, China needs support from other countries. Okay, the buffer zone, and uh, as you, as you guys know, uh, North Korea acts as a geopolitical area because, as you can see in the map right in front of you, like the circle area, North Korea is really close to the Chinese territory, and it t touches the borders and the territory of China. And one of the main reasons why China keep on aiding North Korea is that China 
is the North Korea is a region or area where North Korea is located in the map, as I told you before. And if you see the map to the right, the prison, uh, you can see that North Korea is closely located. And if and if there is a reunification between South Korea and North Korea, uh, and if they re, if they join ties with the Americans, it will make the it will make China very vulnerable because. There are some vastly populated areas right here, which is Manchuria, and it will give stress to the major cities in such as Beijing and Shanghai because of the sea routes they can use after the reunification. Okay, next. No, the deterrent. So about the deterrent, uh, it what my partner is basically saying is that. Uh, North Korea is kind of like a hermit kingdom in that nobody can really get into the country. And at the same time, North Korea is an ally of China, which basically means that there are no U.S. forces like in their within their borders. So this means that in a like strategic strategic sense, the existence of North Korea is very beneficial and even crucial to Ch to Chinese China's national security in the eyes of the Chinese government because. The existence of North Korea may prevents any um, like um, U.S. Uh, military forces, like at the Amrok River, like uh, right across the river, like at the border of at, at, at the border between the Korean Peninsula and China, and the, that's why the exist and that's why they continue to support the the regime in North Korea despite the fact that it's like tyrannical because they need that country to exist. Uh, in the sense that they do not want U.S. forces like close with it to their borders. And adding on to my partner, since North Korea is a whole still part of atomic bombs and atomic technology, uh, the United States of America cannot really uh, approach China because of North Korea because they can't uh, predict what the North Koreans will do against their forces or their allies between South Korea and other nations as well.